Hi, folks. Um, welcome to the next installment of the Wise Women Educational Series. I'm really happy to be able to share this content. So, um, I do this every month. It is a free workshop, and um, I really uh, love it when people can ask questions and collaborate and um, communicate about all of the amazing subjects in midwifery, um, including business topics, um, educational topics, uh, and of course all the other amazing things that we do in midwifery. So I'm just getting settled. Sorry I'm running a little late. I'm so happy to see everyone. So if you're just tuning in, uh, go ahead and share where you're tuning in from. And um, today's topic is homeopathy for the childbearing year. So if you come to this workshop with any specific questions, let us know. And again, I'm so happy to be able to connect with, with people in midwifery. So homeopathy is such an amazing subject. Um, it's such a, a unique and amazing way of healing. And um, today we're going to be focusing mostly on pregnancy and a little bit on labor and delivery and um, the postpartum time as well. So if you have questions already, let me know. And if you are tuning in, tell me where you're tuning in from. I'd love to hear where in the world folks are. So it looks like um, uh, Merida is here from New York. Uh, hi, Amy. Good to see you all. Welcome. So exciting to have um, this time to uh, chat and share. So if you don't know me, um, this is Augustine Colbrook, and I run um, a national fundraising um, or consulting and fundraising firm, Wise Women Consulting. And I have a lot of new, amazing, exciting projects in the works. Look for some launches this November. Um, we've actually, well, I've designed um, a very um, important piece of midwifery equipment that we have never actually had. So I'm very excited about launching that in November. And I'm working on an app with some developers in Mumbai, India for um, midwifery care as well. So it'll be really exciting to launch those things. And um, I also do consulting for um, clients, um, midwives and practice owners, facilitators, um, practice administrators, launching birth centers or expanding and in, in, um, developing their practices. So um, if I can be of any service, let me know. So it looks like we've got uh, a few people on the call today. Uh, Amy's here from California and uh, Meredith's here from New York. Uh, so anyway, welcome. Today we're going to be talking about homeopathy. So, um, let me just say some basics. Homeopathy is um, really, I believe, the medicine of the future. It is a um, amazing, natural, safe medicine type. And it is based in either plant, animal, or mineral. And um, very, very uh, briefly, an overview of homeopathy is that it is um, the the item that you'd like to create the medicine with, you mix uh, one drop of that with six drops of sterile water, and then you succuss or vigorously pound and shake. And the amount of times that it is succussed um, creates the potency. Um, in addition, um, so you guys might have seen homeopathy that's like an X type or homeopathy that's a C potency. Um, and so that's like 10 times or 100 times succussed. And then if you um, take one drop of that succussed. So I'm having some technical difficulties, looks like. Um, anyway, welcome. If you're just joining us, tell us where you're calling from. Looks like California, Texas. So glad you ladies are here. So the number of times that the... Uh, item, the, the constituent that you're making the medicine out of, is mixed with six more drops of sterile water and succussed is the potency. So if that happens six times, it's six levels diluted, um, that's a 6x. And chemically, once you get past 6x um, 
dilution or potency, uh, homeopathy becomes clinically sterile water again. And so this is why there's no drug interactions. Um, it's safe for the children, pregnant women, the elderly. Um, it's an incredible um, uh, health care uh, technique. And if you um, give the wrong remedy, generally nothing happens. Um, if you give um, the, the right remedy, sometimes it's a magical thing. Has anyone ever given the right remedy in homeopathy and seen the really tremendous response? Anyone ever used Arnica or Aconite, uh, Staphys agaria? Some of these have just miraculous shifts. Um, I remember when I was first learning about homeopathy and had small children, um, I had, my son had been on a wagon, was being dragged by his sister and, and fell off and, and had scraped himself pretty badly. And so in homeopathy, it's not just um, physical medicine, it's, it's emotional, spiritual medicine as well. And so um, he was crying really hard. And so I grabbed my homeopathy kit. You know, we're doctoring his bleeding wound, but it was really just a scrape. It wasn't, you know, not life-threatening or anything. Um, and so I grabbed my bag of homeopathy and I gave him Arnica for the pain. And he settled down some, but he was still um, crying a lot. And so then I gave him Aconite because it's for fear. It's like the main piece is for fear. And instantly he just settled down. Um, and that was one of the most um, memorable, extreme examples. Um, so have, have any of you had any amazing responses from giving the right remedy? Let's see, some people are commenting. Um, so yeah, and Amy says that she's used constitutional remedies for her kids, sulfur and phosphorus. And yeah, I agree, it's been amazing. Um, yeah, and, and um, Merite says that she's given the right remedy before, and it's amazing when you know relief instantly. Um, it really is, it is magical, I agree, Merite. And again, So we're having some technical difficulties, sorry about that. Um, if you're just joining, um, say where you're from and where you're tuning in from. And if you have a story about finding the right remedy uh, for a situation and seeing the amazing response, I'd love to hear that story. Um, so uh, yeah, welcome, mamas and midwives, so great to see you. So let's um, kind of explore a little bit more about um, really understanding the pharmacopoeia. So when you're uh, studying homeopathy, you want to look up all of the uh, potential remedies in the pharmacopoeia, which helps to understand the med Whew, Sorry, I'm trying to make um, the Wi-Fi work. Um, if you, anyway, ugh, technical difficulties. So the amazing um, thing about homeopathy is that it's so, so safe. And we can give it to um, people that are already on medications because there's no drug or interactions. Um, and because once you get past 6X potency, it's actually clinically sterile water. The interesting thing, of course, is that um, the higher the potency, i.e. the higher the number, um, the more effective it is. So when we get medicine, the more effective it is. And that's because the delay. So the amazing thing about homeopathy um, is that it's, it's, um, it becomes more effective the higher the potency. And the higher the potency, the less medicine there is because homeopathy is really energy medicine. So that succussing, that vigorous banging that you do, releases the energy constituents of the uh, of the, of the medication. So it's very safe in pregnancy. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk a little bit about um, the, the pregnancy um, remedies that can be really, really helpful. So some of the ailments that I've found to be the most effective in dealing with, or using homeopathy to deal with, is um, nausea can be very, very well um, treated with homeopathy. Um, hemorrhoids is a wonderful um, remedy. Homeopathy can help a lot. Um, all kinds of um, 
itchy skin conditions can be really well um, treated with homeopathy. Um, additionally, homeopathy can be incredibly effective in children and in infants. Um, luckily, um, most people are aware now about teething tablets because that's one of the common complaints of children that can be treated so well with homeopathy. It's incredibly effective um, because teething is um, oftentimes has to do with energy. Um, there's so much eruption, there's so much development and expansion and so it, it dovetails nicely with the medicine of homeopathy. Um, so what we're going to do is kind of walk through some common complaints and the, the remedies but I want to say that the thing about homeopathy that's so amazing is that it's a really very um, a very detailed um, medicine. Now you don't have to know it all in order to start using it um, but to get really effective so that almost every remedy you give really works, you have to do a lot of study. And that's where the pharmacopoeia comes in really effectively. And this is the internationally um, developed uh, master list of the symptoms and um, the treatment. So uh, a really great resource um, for homeopathy is um, homeopathyworks.com. Uh, that's Washington Homeopathic's website, and they have a lot of articles, a lot of resources, and then they, they also sell um, some of the, the, the best product, I think. Um, and they have a children's kit, which is really nice to start with. Okay, so again, if you're just joining, uh, tell us where you're, where you're calling in from, and if you have any specific questions, or of course a story about homeopathy working really, really well. So I'm just gonna pull up my little list here um, so that we can um, talk about symptoms. Um, okay. So, homeopathy um, for pregnancy uh, can be really, really awesome. Pull it up for us. And if you're waiting on me, go ahead and say where you are in the world, because I like to know where you lovely people are calling in from. Okay, so let's talk about um, nausea first. It's a really great one. Okay, sorry, having a moment. Uh, my list is, eh, we're having tech, Mercury's in retrograde. <laughs> so we're having problems everywhere. Okay, and this is actually much more common in Europe, so um, we, there's a lot of research that comes to us from um, European sources. So, um, there's a number, again, this is a very extensive um, process, you have to study a lot, but um, generally, if, um, if nausea starts as soon as you lift your head off the pillow, and Cocculus indica um, might be the best uh, homeopathic remedy for you. Um, it's derived from the cocoa flower, and 30C uh, dosage, three times a day, is usually best. Um, and again, it's especially useful when nausea is related to movement. Um, for whatever reason, morning sickness is a, it's a strange beast, and there's a lot of different triggers. Um, if the nausea is worse in the morning um, and you keep getting sick um, with small amounts of food um, and also you have some mucus um, sensations of mucus in the body, then Nux Vomica is probably um, the better uh, option and that's also 30C three times a day. Um, sometimes the smell of food is what is the trigger for sickness um, and if that's the case then I recommend sepia 
sepia, uh, again, 30C, three times a day. Um, and if, the, if, if, if any of these remedies, the symptoms are really, really severe, um, you can, of course, take them every two hours at the same strength. But um, if you end up not being able to keep fluids down for more than 24 hours, um, you need to probably talk to your, your provider um, and maybe get an IV. Um, Brandy's asking about the first remedy, Cocculus indica, that's C-O-C-C-U-L-U-S-I-N-D-I-C-A, Cocculus india, and um, that's, that's about movement, that's related to movement. Another really common uh, complaint in the first trimester is breast tenderness and discomfort, um, and of course this is a big hormonal you know, reaction, hormones are changing so much in early pregnancy. Um, and it, it affects your body. But homeopathy can really help um, with this. Um, and the remedy that I most often recommend is Pusatilla. Um, and again, that's 30C um, taken twice a day. And it's, a, it's kind of a long-term solution. It's not like one day you take it and then your boobs stop hurting. It's more like you need to take it for a couple of days. And then you'll start to notice that in general the symptoms are, are less, pardon me, um, and then, of course, uh, wearing a nice supportive bra and even a sports bra while you're sleeping really helps um, because the, the ligaments are what's really um, inflamed with the hormones. And so the ligaments that hold up your uterus and your breasts, um, so those round ligament pains and the breast pains are really related. It's a ligament issue. And we can put strain on them as the breast and the uterus both increase in size. So um, pulsatilla can be taken for that, and the dosage is 30C. Um, backache is a really common complaint in pregnancy. Um, and as your belly gets bigger and bigger, um, and your whole center of gravity changes, uh, and the pelvis actually starts to enlarge, um, the round ligaments get loose, um, and it can cause backache. Um, and so um, I really like CaliCarb for this. Um, and so that's CaliCarbicum, uh, K-A-L-I, and then Carbicum. Um, and it's specifically for when the back feels weak, um, tired, um, and there can be a dragging sensation. That's totally linked with CaliCum, CaliCarbicum. Um, and... Um, then there's one more remedy that might be worth trying, and that's Naturum, Matur, I always, never even say this right, Naturum, Moric, oh, I never do it right, Moriticum, um, and again that spelling is N-A-T-R-U-M, and then the next word is M-U-R-I-A-T-C-U-M, and this is also 30C um, dosage. Um, if your back is, is hurting because of injury, like if, you, if your back, if you're just pregnant and you lifted too much one day, then we go back to Arnica. Arnica is the best um, option. And um, I always say that a good uh, like follow-up after Arnica is actually Restox. Um, and Restox is actually made from poison ivy, poison oak, which is kind of fascinating. Obviously, there's no, um, there's no, none of the actual... Um, um, herb or, or, you know, in this case, poison ivy is still in the, in the dosage. But the, the men energy that comes off of that is, um, like, think about how you feel when you have poison oak or poison ivy. You're super irritated, itchy, inflamed, frustrated, um, scratchy, and just sort of generally irritated, right? And so if you think about how your muscles in your back feel, we're trying to match the remedy to the emotion feeling. And so the, the emotion feeling with rust tox is irritated, um, like just uh, inflamed and itchy and frustrated, right? So if a mom's feeling that way, rust tox is actually a really great remedy. So oftentimes that's how back muscles will feel. So Arnica takes care of the original swelling, bruising, um, trauma kind of feel. And then we follow up with rust tox and generally that solves it. Um, with Restox, you do a, a lower potency. I try 6x, and then we just do that every six hours, um, and sometimes even up to seven days of dosage. So another really common complaint of pregnancy is constipation, one of the most troublesome symptoms, of course, and um, a lot of reasons for this. We have an increased weight of the uterus on the bowels, 
Um, and we also have hormones that slow the digestive process so that we can get more nutrients out of the food. And all of that can, can definitely create um, this constipation. Uh, we have natural laxatives like fruit juice or dried fruit or prune juice, things like that. Obviously staying really hydrated and having lots of uh, fibrous fruits and vegetables can be helpful. Um, but if there's a, a sensation that um, even after you go that your bowels are not really emptied, um, that's a really typical symptom picture for um, lycopodium. And um, I would do 6C um, four times a day. And that can really, um, that can really change things. Um, if you just have uh, like no urge to go at all, um, and uh, it's almost like it's, there's like trouble passing, but there's like no urge, like you know you need to in your head, but your body doesn't actually have the feeling. Aluminia can be um, a really great uh, remedy. And that's six, that's six C again. Um, and then if you have large hard stools, which make you feel like there's a ball inside your rectum, that quote is like the most definitive diagnostic for which remedy. Um, and especially if you have shooting pains, that all correlates to sepia. And um, 6C in sepia is where I would go. And you can do that four to six times a day as well. So another complaint is um, varicosities, that your varicose veins um, become more prominent or actually develop. Um, and um, certainly we want to have our midwife look at those because they can be a a sign of, of a real issue. We need to rule out any, um, um, you know, uh, actual uh, uh, too large varicosities, which every, can result in potential clot formation um, or thrombo, um, thrombophobitis. We don't want to have any infections in the veins. So it's definitely talk, important to talk to your midwife. But um, uh, we can also use pusadilla twice a day at 6C to help um, deal with the discomfort of varicose veins. And carboveg is also another good option, especially if there's burning pain. Burning, if, if the mom uses the word burning at all, always think carboveg. So once we hit the third trimester, heartburn can be a real issue, and I think this is a, a, a huge topic. I've got a blog post about um, heartburn uh, remedies um, that are like natural remedies on my website, augustinecoldbrook.com. Um, but in terms of homeopathy for heartburn, um, there can be some, some good options. Um, there's, there's this relaxing effect of the progesterone hormone, um, and it, it actually relaxes the esophagus. And um, so then the pressure from the uterus pushing up on the stomach can just cause this very physiologically normal um, heartburn, and that's a pain. So, um, you know, sulfur can be a really great remedy, um, and also lycopodium is another good one, especially if eating small amounts tends to help and make you feel better. Lycopodium is the one to think about. And again, um, if you have a, a severe burning sensation at all, um, capsicum might be the good remedy. And capsicum is made um, from peppers, actually pepper um, seeds. And so um, again, we're trying to match the symptom of the plant to the symptom of the mom. That's how it works in, in homeopathy. And so think about the symptoms of the plant. So hot pepper seeds are burning. And so if that is her if that's her feeling, then um, capsicum might be the solution. Because the whole reality with homeopathy is that it works on the law of like cures like. So if um, what we're trying to do, again, is match those symptom pictures um, because it, it needs an equal and positive response to the same symptom. And, and there's actually such a thing as called proving the remedy, and that's when um, you have no symptoms and you take enough of a dose of a specific uh, remedy and actually to cause those symptoms. Um, and so uh, that's, that's the worst that you could do in using homeopathy is that you could take so much that you actually start proving the remedy. But with these dosages of 6C and 30X and 30C, that's very, very unlikely. 
So again, um, if we have heartburn that causes a burning sensation, always think capsicum. So um, with all of the uterine's pressure down on the bladder, we can sometimes have um, bladder discomfort. Um, and certainly if you think that there's a UTI going on, always order labs and find out. Um, but uh, a really strong urgency uh, need to go. Um, or if there's no bladder infection, but still random burning, stinging, um, uh, symptoms, um, then we can we can use um, some homeopathy remedies to help with that discomfort. Um, Cantharthias is a good remedy if you have um, constant stinging or burning in the bladder. Um, and again, always rule out a UTI first. Um, but uh, it's important to 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 rule that out. Uh, Phosphoricum. Um, uh, acidum 6C can help if there's like cloudy urine. Um, and then for itching and irritability, um, especially if there's like little dribbles of urine that you can't quite control, um, Nux Vomica is, is the remedy I recommend. And that's at a 6C dose um, about three to four times a day. And again, we have that, that weight of the baby um, on the bladder and causticum can be a great remedy if, um, if when you cough, sneeze, or stand up, you have a little dribble of urine. That can be a great option. So um, any questions about pregnancy remedies or dosing, um, anything we've covered so far? And if you've joined us in the last little bit, tell me, tell me where you've checked in from. So let's see, it looks like we've got Cindy's here from Georgia. And Jana says she's here from South, Southern California. So great. And i um, really happy to be on the call with you ladies. Welcome. And uh, we're going to kind of jump into some labor remedies now. But I wanted to give you all the option to ask questions or give me the thumbs up if you're having fun. Okay, so labor um, can be an amazing uh, time to use homeopathy. Um, and certainly I want to make the caveat that we don't use homeopathy for um, urgent, uh, emergent care. This is more for discomfort, um, irritations, long-term challenges, um, anything acute we need to actually use Western medicine, so just, just keep that in your mind. Um, okay, so um, uh, there's, there's a really... Um, some good remedies um, to use. Uh, I tend to recommend taking Arnica prophylactically once a week the whole last month of pregnancy because it can really help with the feelings of trauma and bruising postpartum. Um, certainly we're going to take Arnica postpartum, but there's no reason not to take it um, the last four weeks of pregnancy. Um, even if we don't experience trauma and bruising in pregnancy, the very experience of carrying the weight of that baby can cause those sensations. So Arnica can really help the last um, four months or four weeks. Um, and then also, um, I highly recommend Arnica, especially if this mom had is a VBAC mom, because um, as she gets more and more pregnant, um, even if she's not physically experiencing the symptoms, she did experience um, trauma and bruising with her last pregnancy that resulted in a cesarean. And so she has mental trauma and bruising, and Arnica can be incredibly helpful for that uh, VBAC mom's preparation. Um, <clears throat> if there's a lot of pressure and pain in the abdomen, but not a lot of active progress in labor, um, uh, colo colo I always say this wrong too, coloxin, coloxinthis, coloxin, <laughs> I always mess it up, C-O-L-O-C-Y-N-T-H-I-S, um, can be a really awesome remedy, and this would be, give it 30C or 30X, um, and the midwife um, can, can help to um, as examine the cervix and even do some cervical stretching with that remedy, even on her glove, it can really help. If there's a lot of pressure and pain, but again, not a lot of progress, it's oftentimes related to, uter to cervical scar tissue. 
Um, and you can give that remedy every 10 minutes in labor if you're dealing with that. Um, if contractions seem to have died off um, or if the pains kind of feel like a band around the uterus, then califylum is the remedy. And I usually give that in 200C. And califylum is the homeopathic preparation of blue cohosh. And blue cohosh tends to work on the smooth muscles of the uterus, so it's a really great remedy. Um, and we can give that hourly if we need. Um, and um, like I said, I, I use califylum 200C for that one. Um, but it's really important that before you give califylum that you make sure the baby's in a great position. You don't ever give califylum with a baby in a funky position because it tends to wedge the baby further in that way. Um, if um, we have a very tight, rigid cervix, um, gelsinium can be a really wonderful option. And um, gelsinium, I think, is actually... Actually, I don't, I don't exactly remember the origin of gelsinium, but it can be a great option on the cervix. And then um, uh, also pusatilla for a baby that's in a funky position. And let's see, um, I made some notes about after the birth. Um, mom can continue taking Arnica, and hypergum can help a lot if she did have a cesarean, or stitches can help a lot. Staphylococcus agaria can also be an awesome remedy for cesarean surgery. The main, like, uh, emotional connection to Staphylococcus agaria is anger, and so a mom who's angry postpartum definitely needs Staphylococcus agaria. Um, and her, uh, hypergum can really help too. Hypergum's um, made from bell pepper, which I always find is curious. Um, so um, if the cervix is being very rigid, I said, oh, I said gelsinium already. Um, yeah, and then postpartum. Um, I really um, love carrying postpartum remedies for the baby, homeopathic remedies for the baby, um, because they can work so well. And one of the remedies that um, we've used uh, for uh, a long time um, in babies is... Um, my brain just blanked. Hold on one second. <laughs> I love it. It's not my best day. Technology and all that. Um, we gave the baby Antonia, antimonium tart. It just came back. So antimonium tart is for um, respiratory uh, distress, um, mucousy, uh, grunting, retractions, flaring. So um, so with those brand new babies, um, midwives can carry antimonium tart. And I've seen it just be absolutely make an incredible difference. And although this is rarely talked about in midwifery, if you have a baby who you know got some pool water, um, antimonium tart is a great remedy for that um, really wheezy, grunty, liquidy baby um, could really use that remedy. So Amy's asking a question, um, Staphysagaria. Yeah, Staphysagaria is a great remedy in any of labor, birth, postpartum, or even pregnancy preparation, um, but especially post-cesarean because its main symptom picture is anger. And um, whether moms are really cognizant and conscious of that or not, um, there, there is anger uh, postpartum when they birth in a way that they didn't expect. Um, and so uh, Staphysagaria can be a really awesome remedy. All righty. Um, and uh, if we're talking about inducing labor, uh, Staphysagaria um, can be helpful if the reason that mom won't go into labor is because she's mad at someone. Um, but the standard uh, labor induction uh, remedies are Califylum and Simisifuga. They tend to really be effective, used um, uh, collaboratively, much like they are in the herbal world, where um, califylum is homeopathic preparation of blue cohosh, simisifuga is the homeopathic preparation of black cohosh. So um, they are sister herbs um, and used uh, interchangeably like that. They can be really, really effective. Um, yeah, okay, so that's kind of my, my overview of specific herbal recommendations. Um, does anyone have um, any other specific questions they'd like to go over today before we um, 